Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Movie News here at MBE. Yes. We weren't here last night, John, obviously for some reasons that we don't want to really get into. Yeah. But obviously... A, a pet emergency. Your boy sustained an injury on Sunday yes. and it was very serious. So it was, yes. um, We decided not to uh, do any shows last night. So that's why I'm here on Tuesday joining co-host, as you can hear, John C. Walsh. And John, um, we're going to just get right into this because I think um, yes. we're in that sort of moment, that mood right now, mm-hmm. where we're not laughing and joking uh, like we normally do in the show, so it's probably uh, suitable for us to get into this topic. Uh, and it is our thumbnail and our headline, and it is something that, um, it's a very interesting article coming in from the New York Times, and um, yes. I think this is the first time we've reported on one of their articles actually, but um, I'll tell you what it's about. It's uh, it's Netflix are getting tangled in India's religious tensions. Now, Mm. nationalist leaders decry scenes in the show A Suitable Boy between a Hindu and a Muslim at a time of rising interfaith conflict and government efforts to control online content. Mm. Now, what I'm going to do, John, is I'm going to read this. It's not too lengthy. It's maybe about four paragraphs or not, but it will give you an idea of what this story is about. And um, you actually made an interesting observation on yeah. this uh, A Suitable Boy that was actually picked up by Netflix after the BBC yes. uh, let it go. And Typical well, of the British Broadcasting Corporation. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'll read this anyway. This is New Delhi on television. Lata and Kabir are clandestine lovers thwarted by faith and history. She is Hindu and he is Muslim in India in the early 1950s in the wake of uh, bloody sectarian clashes that echo through the country to this day. At one point in a secluded spot with a Hindu temple, temple as the backdrop, the two young college students share a furtive but passionate kiss. In the real world, that on-screen kiss has embroiled Netflix, the American streaming service, in the, incre- in the increasingly bitter and religiously charged world of Indian politics. Members of the Hindu Nationalist Party that controls India's central government have asked the authorities to investigate Netflix, calling the scene in the television series a suitable boy offensive to their beliefs. They have also called on Indians to boycott the streaming service. Netflix is not likely to face serious legal troubles, experts say, but the campaign puts pressure on the streaming services at a time when the government is increasingly censoring of what Indians watch online. What is your views oh, on this? Sh- done it again. John? Yes, yeah, so I'll go to the main screen. I've screwed the production up again. That's okay. Stephen, thoughts on this? I can understand both sides of this argument. Netflix have just acquired this TV show from the BBC. It wasn't a deliberate decision of them to creatively introduce this kiss. I'll go to myself to give you a break. Okay. So I can understand Netflix, probably their side of the equation, they've just bought up an interesting TV show. And we know through experience watching lots of Indian movies, there's a lot of Indian content on Netflix. There's a lot of Indian content on Amazon Prime too. We have started to go into the rabbit hole of Indian movies, TV shows. So they are probably just thinking, this is a well-crafted TV show. We'll buy it up, we'll put it on there. We've got lots of Indian viewers. Probably innocently didn't even realise that the controversy this would stir up. I can see that side of it. I can also see the... Hindu side of it, the what is that? The Hindu Nationalist Party, yeah, deeply devout in their religion, and obviously there's some conflict between Hindu and Muslim. They're not to combine, if you'd like, kiss any relationships at all. It's almost like I think Jewish people have got that as well. That what they call the uh, there's a name for it that the Plebington's outside Jewish religions. They, they, there's a term I can't recall. I'm not yeah. Jewish, but they are the same. They sort of get this strict confines. They they devout people of that religion. So I can understand the devout side of it, the, the, the Hindu side, there's that conflict between Hinduism, Hin, Hindi, Hinduism, I think that's how you call that's it, it yeah. and Islam. Obviously the conflict between Pakistan and India as well, it's been going on for decades now. I was, as I keep saying, close friends with an Indian, a long time friend, I worked with him for years, came from Hyderabad, he regaled me of tales of the conflict in Kashmir, Pakistan, India. And some of his views yeah, I mean. <laughs> on Pakistan and certain people within Pakistan. So I know yeah. of the, the a, a really one-sided view, John. You've got yeah, to I've got a yeah. one-sided yeah. view, and I, so I know what it's like, Stephen. I know what the opinions are. Yeah. So I can understand this <clears throat> this controversy and how it's been taken really serious. They are urging people to ban or, or maybe boycott the service. 
Whether it happens or not, I don't know. India is a very diverse country. John, Lots yeah. of different I, I'm religions. I'm always for um, letting people, particularly adults, decide for themselves what they want to watch mm-hmm. and what they don't want to watch. Whether that be you know putting up a disclaimer at the start. We've seen it in a lot of Indian films so far that we've reviewed, John. They mm-hmm. have a lot of disclaimers, whether it be about smoking, uh, real events, or yeah. cruelty to the animals and stuff like that. So there's nothing to stop Netflix putting a card up saying, you know, if this is what this subject matter is. If you're offended by this, then you know we wouldn't recommend you watching this. Yeah. Um, it's very. They've done it before. It, it's, it's, uh, you know, I don't really want to talk about other countries' governments and and how they should be running their countries, yeah. John, because our country is a bit of a shambles itself, <laughs> um, and certain things, certainly in sectarian issues as well. Oh yeah. Um, but you've got to be careful, uh, or the government have got to be very careful in in deciding what they sense and what they are deciding what the people should watch and what the people should mm-hmm. not watch. Yeah. That's a, a very um, dangerous path to get down. Totalitarian, tyrannical yeah, path. exactly. Yes. You know, but um, I'm like advantage. you, John, we are looking in the, the outside in in this, mm-hmm. but we are no strangers to this sort of subject, no. sectarianism here not in Scotland either. <laughs> um, we've all experienced it. No matter what side of the divide, if I, and I hate that term, uh, you're on, yeah. everyone's experienced it one way or another, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Steve and I experienced it in Ayrshire. Yeah. Of all places. Yeah. <laughs> Not in Glasgow. No. I had someone spit in the ground yeah. because I was wearing a certain scarf. So yeah. I am well aware yeah. of sectarianism. I know you are. Yeah. Deeply troubled country. We yeah. stay in, yeah. swept yeah. under John, the carpet. To this day, it's another term I can't stand yeah. is, what are you? You know, it's always when you start a new job in this country, what are you? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's a, it baffles me, but I, yeah. I don't really want to get into that. So, no. from that point of view, we get people, and, and you've, it's about respecting people's beliefs and, and um, traditions as well. Yeah. But when art is imitating life, and filmmakers generally, the creative ones, will go down that path. Mm-hmm sometimes they don't take into consideration the sort of backlash it will take. Or, or maybe they do. Maybe that's what they're in it for, yeah. you know? We well, know Steve. we know some directors out there don't mind 95% of people hating their film yeah. as long as 5% of the people love their film. Yeah. I'm not mentioning names. Yeah, right, Johnson, heads. I'll mention yeah. it. Um, so uh, it's a very fine line, John, but at the end of the day, um, you don't have to watch this content. No. That's the bottom line. And that's why... I think most sensible Indian people will not boycott the service. Just like we've had the controversy, what was it, oh God, what was that name of that movie? With the underage kids being sexualised in the trailer, and there was a big furore over it on Twitter, people were saying boycott Netflix. Didn't happen then, no. and I don't think it's going to happen over in India with this. Stephen, I've been reading the article, by all accounts, it's a sort of nationalistic pitch by this Hindu nationalist party. Yeah. There's been a lot of anti-Muslim initiatives being put into place, including penalties against anyone found guilty of forced marriage change in religion. I yeah. kind of, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with the initiatives against people and their beliefs and stuff, but I do agree with the forced marriage thing. I don't agree with that marriage thing. And we actually watched Dan Gal, and there was a powerful scene in Dan Gal yeah, about that, yeah. about being forced to marry someone. So, again, it's deeply divisive. I don't know enough about the whole no. Hindu-Muslim conflict. I know a lot about Protestantism, and Catholicism, I know about that yeah. conflict, and I know there's tensions run high on both both sides, and it's very, very divisive. And if you, Stephen, you mentioned there was a, did you say there was a movie? That, that there was a, a book, similar John, thing in the yeah, conflicts. It was, yeah, a, it was a book I read in high school called Across the Barricades, yes. which was based. Um, the story was more or less uh, about a Catholic girl and a, a Protestant boy. Mm-hmm. Um, and attracted to each other, going out and stuff like that, and it caused a fury, you know, with obviously both sides of the divide across yeah. the barricades. That's was, was the, but you know, it was a very basic story. You know, it wasn't anything to. Um, it's to show acceptance, Stephen. It's yeah, about acceptance, uh, uh, and the message was in there, yeah. John, in a very simple in- fashion for high school. Yeah. But um, you look at films like Michael Collins or In the Name of the Father, etc. Yeah. Um, these historical films. Um, there's more. I, I can't think off the top of my head, but those subjects with the troubles in Ireland and that kind of thing coming into play as well mm-hmm. uh, are always going to offend one side or another. Um, it's, 
it's just the way it is, you know. It's and at the end of the day, we we did try and find out if this film was actually based on a true story. I or don't not. believe it is. But John, the situation is true in yeah. life, you know. Um, let's not dance around it, you know. I think that these situations have cropped up probably more times than you can imagine. And Stephen, it's just a class classic sort of romantic story set, maybe fictional. Yeah. Clashes, bloody sectarian clashes, 1950s, romance blossoms out of it, two people from different sides of a divide. We've seen this done before, we've seen it done in Titanic, and with the class sim- yeah, system. And the ironic thing is, John, the message is love. You the know? Love, yeah. And love as is the Beatles, love at the end of the day. As know? the Beatles used to say, the love you give is equal to the love you take, so... Yeah. Stephen, I'm not for division, I'm not no. for initiatives against one group of people in society, mm-hmm. we've seen this over in China, with Muslims being put in concentration camps, it's been swept under the carpet... Not for it. Understand both sides of it, though. Being from a country, like he says, which has suffered from sectarianism, well aware of it, known a good Indian friend for many, many years who told me about all the intricacies between Pakistan and India. I know what it's about and understand why tensions are running high, but I think yeah. it's a storm and a teacup, really. Yeah. It's a film at the end of the day. But, uh, John, we're going to move on anyway, very swiftly after that, uh, to uh, another article coming in from Screen Rant. I think the next... Four mm-hmm. articles are all coming from this publication, so I'll just get that in there just now. And it's uh, Eternal Star excited to play the MCU's first deaf superhero. Eternal Star Lauren Ridloff, who will star as Macari in the uh, Macari, Lou Macari, in the <laughs> <laughs> upcoming movie, shares uh, her excitement over playing the MCU's first deaf superhero. Uh, Louis not Louis Macari. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to read a couple of quotes here, John. This is actually it was in an interview with Scott Davis on the Hey You Guys YouTube channel via movie movie web. Uh, Ridloff revealed her excitement over playing Macari particularly in regards to representation for deaf people. She said this, I am more thrilled than overwhelmed about being given the opportunity to represent the deaf community. I'm very thrilled about that, just to bring it in that storyline within the MCU. I think there's plenty of room for more stories like that. Um, it's very short and sweet, John. Yes. But um, I, I, don't know if, um, I don't know if the actress is actually... Um, Oh, I hope she is. Um, <laughs> but, well, Charlie Cox... She isn't, she's in trouble, Charlie let me Cox, tell you. Wasn't blind, yeah. you know, but uh, that's. I was just going to say that, you know, um, Daredevil, you know, um, has already been portrayed in movie and, uh, you know, in film and uh, in television as well, more recently. Ryan Reynolds uh, played them, didn't he? Uh, was it him? Ben Affleck. Oh, Ben Affleck, yeah, ben Affleck he isn't yeah. blind. Um, so, so um, what's your views on this, John? Because mm. um, we can talk about the Eternals as well, because I know it's a very short article, because. Yeah. Interestingly, the Eternals uh, was actually originally scheduled for coming out this month. Um, now it's rescheduled for November 2021, so we've got a whole year before yes. we get to see this film. This is probably one of the most anticipated films uh, maybe over the last year or so. Yeah. Um, since we it broke, you know, uh, when Phase 4 was announced. Um, what's Good your views Camille. on this? Camille Nanjiani, he's been shredded. <laughs> he stayed <laughs> yeah. away from cakes. <laughs> For years, yeah. maybe a year, trained like hell, probably took some uh, certain substances, shall we say, because that transformation was unbelievable. <laughs> and now he's going to have to sit it out for longer and longer until he gets back into this character, maybe two, three years down the road, and he'll have to work his arse off again. What did they make about this, Stephen? She's in trouble, this actress. She's in big, big trouble if she's not actually deaf in real life, because let me tell you, <laughs> social media does not take well the people who don't have the actual affliction playing characters with said affliction. Oh, sure. Daniel Sia, Day-Lewis. Sia has made a, an actual movie, the actual singer Sia, made a movie based on, I think, a friend who had autism. And because she cast an actor who didn't have autism in the role, Twitter was going after her, shaming her. What are you doing? There's hundreds of potential disabled actors. Why are you not giving them a chance? This was what it will be like, Stephen. If Lauren yeah. Ridloff doesn't have some impairment in her hearing, she is in trouble. The actual character itself, I don't know if they're just forcing the representation in again, Stephen, because I've searched the character up. I'm not seeing anything about her being deaf. Uh, so, it's strange. But look, I'm not against it. I'm, I said before, but a big melting pot of a society of cultures, of ethnicities, of disabilities... Hundreds of different people out there who look different, who have different things going on. And if you can represent them on the screen and give hope and inspiration to that community, then I'm all for that, man. I, I said it before, I want to see representation at all levels on movies like this, on TV shows. So, ain't against the actual casting. 
of her. I'm not against yeah. the the concept of making the character deaf, even if it wasn't in the actual comics. But I'm not social media. I'm not some but hot liberal. <laughs> I'm liberal, but over there, I, I'd be centre. Yeah. Over there, the left wing is extreme as hell, and they are crazy. They'll come after her. Just just before I give my views as well, we've got a comment there coming in from Anish. Uh, Yeah, I don't know how Kamel managed to do that. (laughs) 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 But it looks great. It looks amazing. I'll tell you how he managed to do it. Because he took steroids. (laughs) He went from being a, a sort of couch potato, a guy who was fat, skinny fat, had no muscle mass at all, to being ripped to hell. And I've seen his weight training. This guy was... Bicep curling less than what I'm doing. Yeah, John. Uh, exactly. <laughs> J- just going back to um, just going back what? to what you were saying. You know about the MCU introducing more uh, inclusive stories. Uh, it's absolutely right. You know, and I think it does say in this mm-hmm. article, considering the sheer number of Marvel projects currently in the works, mm-hmm. there's no excuse not to include new exciting characters with diverse backgrounds. Yeah. Luckily, after many years of movies starring mostly straight white men. There's nothing wrong with that either, by the way. Uh, Marvel is making important strides oh, to, towards <laughs> representation. Did you and hear what CBR wrote about Captain America? No, no, no. Toxic masculinity. Right. This guy's a beacon of hope. Yeah. He's the purest yeah. human on the planet. Yeah. He is um, worthy of wielding Mjolnir. Pro- the character's probably been on the planet longer than the, <laughs> them. But uh, <laughs> Toxic masculinity. Horses for courses. Oh, God. Uh, including Jesus the Eternals. It Christ. features a far more diverse cast than, than what's been seen in the past that will also finally show mm-hmm. the MCU's first gay superhero in Brian Terry Henry's Fastos. Now, I've got to be honest, John. Well, I, 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 Stephen, I, I like Brian yeah, Terry. Yeah, He's exactly. Great, but I, I don't. When I say I don't care, um, I'm, I'm not really. I'm not really hung up about people's sexual orientation or uh, their their disabilities to that point. You know, I'm not going to go and watch a film because. Of that, I'm mm-hmm. going to go and watch them because they're a well-written, well-formed yep. character. And but it is good that uh, you know Marvel are looking into introducing more inclusive stories into their uh, their arc, you know, because they have got them. Yeah. Um, but also, um, I don't, I don't think it's very fair to say, you know, um, you know about the representation and. It's been mostly straight white men, mm-hmm. you know, for years and years. Um, from a business point of view, they made the conscious decision to really kickstart this universe with their more well-known characters, mm-hmm. like he would do. You would not start your MCU with Miss um, Marvel, Miss Marvel, or um, the. Guardians of the Galaxy, which I love, but you would not start yeah. it with them, yeah. uh, you know. Um, no, you start it with Iron Man. Yeah, exactly. And the Spider Man, <laughs> had the rights, but yeah. they didn't. No, and then you the Hulk, start it with Hulk. Hulk. Yeah, and exactly. Captain America, Thor, and Thor. Yeah, the big ones, you know, yeah. and then that carries <laughs> the the whole universe forward into. They're criticising the way they've done it, but if they didn't do it this way, these characters wouldn't see the light of day. That's what That's I'm trying what, to say, John. Stephen, you're right. If you didn't create this with Robert Downey Jr. The personality he had, John Favreau picked him out single-handedly for the role. You wouldn't have the opportunity for a deaf character on the screen because no one would have watched it. No. They wouldn't have been invested 10 years on. It wouldn't exist. What he says, though, about well-formed characters, you don't care about orientation, disabilities and characters. I'm the same. We've seen it with Mark Hamill on yeah. Twitter. People were calling for Luke to be yeah. made a homosexual character and he says, look, I don't really care. No, if, if you want him to be that, then yeah. he's that in yeah. your mind. Yeah, But exactly. it doesn't have to be established in the war yeah. also J.K. Rowan done it with Dumbledore no one really cared that's what it is he's, he's a gay character that's fine with the death thing th- the reason I'm bringing this up Millicent Simmons this was a character of Millicent I can't. I can never say that name A Quiet Place the daughter mm. actual deaf actress yeah. they wrote that John Krasinski wrote that into the story very well the deafness of the character in a world where hypersensitivity and sound these creatures could kill you if you make a sound that's a well-written-in character with a disability that's used in the actual story. With this McCarry character, I don't see how... How's it going to come up? No. That she's deaf? Will it just be written in a book somewhere? She's deaf? Are they, are they going to take 10 minutes out of the Eternals to establish this character as deaf? I don't see I don't see why they're highlighting they, it. That's they what could I'm do a, a less subtle way of her heightened senses because yeah, she, suppose, yeah. she can't hear yeah. that. I don't know, John. Daredevil. I'm yeah. sure they'll work it out and it will make sense. It, will, it won't be shoehorned in. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But listen, John, we're going to move on to our next article. This is 
Again, Screen Rant, it's uh, Gremlins 3, won't have CGI, Mogwai uh, confirms the original writer. Original Gremlins writer Chris Columbus, who we were talking about last week, I'm sure, right, says yeah. that uh, if it's ever made, Gremlins 3 will stick to using puppets and largely stay away from CGI, which I'm obviously glad about because I loved that original um, Mogwai. Um, and we've seen what Gizmo. happened with Yoda. Yeah. When he was made CGI, yeah. he was terrifying. Yeah. And then and the it, puppet was terrifying as well. Uh, yeah, the, pu- the puppet was terrifying yeah. enough. But um, <laughs> this is actually... Um, actually, the CG was better. It just says here, Joan, that through there are still no solid plans for a third Gremlins movie, which I hope they do. There has been plenty of conversation lately about the franchise making a return to the screen. Speaking recently to Collider, originally... Uh, original... Original, original, <laughs> I'm trying to say that, <laughs> Gremlins writer Chris Columbus talked about his own vision for a possible Gremlins 3, which included, include, I'm struggling tonight, John, I don't it's know what's late, Stephen, I think late. it's the water, I think you've drugged me, uh, which includes <laughs> sticking to old school techniques in order to realise the movie's oh. creatures. Um, he said this, I would love to do it, I wrote a script, so there's an existing script, we are working out some rights issues right now, so we're just trying to figure out when the best time to make that film would be, I would still do it the same way, I would do it as tangible puppets, not CGI, maybe having, you know, we have had one stop motion scene in the first Gremlins, but I don't think I'd use much CGI in Gremlins 3. Um, John, it seems like they're very far on in this project, yeah, actually. Strange, which, isn't it? Yeah. We, we talked about Gremlins 3 um, Speculative. Yeah, I a few speak. months ago. And um, <laughs> funnily enough, John, um, <sighs> Zach, um, I can't remember, is it Gallican, um, who played Billy, uh, the, the lead guy in Gremlins? Did he, actually, not follow he, us on Twitter? he, he follows us on Twitter, <laughs> yes. uh, which is amazing. I, I was absolutely buzzing when he followed us, but he, he still follows us. I always check our. <laughs> <laughs> I always check who's the other guy Steve verified the accounts to see who's following BBC us. guy the film guy who's that tall guy uh, um, Alex Zane Alex yeah, Zane he yeah, follows yeah, as yeah, well he's on Sky movies now doing uh, work but it's yeah we'll have a day where we'll get through all that and we'll talk about all the Harley's famous farted, that, Stephen. That but we'll let him off of it because <laughs> he follows. injured his spine last night so. but um, the fact that uh, Chris Columbus has actually written a script for this John and um, they're trying to work out rights issues yeah. which I always base it now on Sony and Marvel, how they sorted their shit out. Um, if they can do it, then this is going to happen. Yeah. Um, because I can't see these rights issues being a major delay in progression of the production of this uh, third instalment of the Gremlins franchise, John. Stephen, I'm looking on IMDb. It says it's been announced. I must have missed Gremlins 3 being announced. Yeah. Breaking news, it's just been announced. Also says The Goonies 2 has been announced. Mm. When did that happen? Jesus Christ, I must have been living under a rock here. Yeah. Yeah, but this guy's been involved in so many great movies over the years, really. Movies that I grew up watching, the likes of Gremlins and the Goonies, yeah. funnily enough. He's been involved in Little, little, uh, little Nemo. I don't think that's fine anymore. I think I'm thinking of a completely different one. I'm just reading the guy's IMDb. Can you tell, guys? But you know what I mean? He's, he's fantastic, man. Was he not involved in... Uh, one of the first two Harry Potter movies as well. I'm sure he was in some vein. Uh, yeah, I think he was. Director, yeah. I think, maybe. So he's such a, a re- renowned and acclaimed director, producer, screenwriter. If he's putting his vision for this movie onto paper, then whoever's involved, I don't know which studio it is, they need to make it happen, man. Yeah. Gremlins 1 and 2 were brilliant. I mean, yeah. growing up watching it's them. One's a Christmas on, movie, I think, isn't it? Uh, yeah, the first one. Yeah. Uh, the second one didn't get well received by a lot of people. I thought it was great. Christopher Lee's in it. Um, for that alone is uh, is amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure uh, if Ian Holmes was in that. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> I can't remember, but uh, Christopher Lee's certainly in there, uh, and it's a good first film. It's a, it's a more comedy film. I'll, I'll you know, granted, I think the first film. Um, was comedy horror you know there were some scary moments yeah, in that film um, and I always watch it Whoop, there's it that's it just went away John I've just got a tan now that was amazing live on oh, TV and was well. a heart attack there so we are going to do you want to go to a yes, screen just now because we'll take we're a- looking very tanned <laughs> We're looking very tan, folks. <laughs> Which I'm not complaining I ne- about. I nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> oh, my God. We'll come back. We'll try and utilise our one light setup and we'll sort this out. It's an issue with the, the lead. It happens quite a bit. But look, let's bring it up, man. I can't get it up. Let's go. There we go. Oh, no. We'll go to me. There we go, guys. We'll be back in just a few moments. <laughs>
Hello, 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 we are back. Let's try, Stephen, and see if this looks good. Let's go to me, I'll look like a half moon crescent here. There you go, I look terrible. That's fine. You know what? That's fine. I don't even give a shit. Let's, Let there be it's light. serviceable, Stephen. Yeah. You look good because your camera's better than mine. <laughs> and there's a little thing yeah. on it that turns up the aperture and yeah. allows more light in. Mine's is just a, a plain Jane Cannon, so. That's fine. That's fine. Listen, show yeah, must go on, as better, I say. You know? That's show business and all that jazz. But, John, we're just going to wrap up this topic we're talking about Gremlins 3. Um, I liked. First two instalments, different mm-hmm. tones. Uh, it'd be very interesting to see where they're going to take this third instalment and where the story is going to take us, whether it'll be the original cast coming back. Yeah. Um, Phoebe Cates, I forgot about her as well. Um, see what she's doing. She was great. I was just that. searching was up that, to see uh, if Ian Holmes was in it, Stephen. What was that Rick Mail film? Uh, Drop Dead Fred. Drop Dead she Fred. Was in Phoebe brilliant. Cates. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Game, um, so it'd be great. If they're going to do it, I hope they get the original cast back yeah. as well. Uh, the, one, the surviving members of the original cast, because it's been... Almost 35 years, John, since that Crazy. original film, which I love. But we'll move on anyway to our next topic, Ian John. Home was not in. He wasn't. I'm he tripping. was not. I'm absolutely tripping. Um, I'm thinking Lord of the Rings with Christopher Lee and Ian Holm. <laughs> Totally different thing. But, um, John, uh, it's our custom Star Wars chat. Yes. Since we don't have a Star Wars show anymore, thanks to Star Wars. Thanks to uh, Kathleen <laughs> Kennedy yeah. being completely incompetent yeah. in destroying Star Wars. Well, John, she actually spoke... Um, the other day, talking about John Boyega's um, thing that he was, I bet she did. you know, his uh, bugbear, and he was. She actually was coming out um, defending, which is defending, <laughs> a bit, of a, bit of a turn up for the Strange. books. But you're the president, yeah. Kathleen. You, you made the decisions you, to sidetrack him. You have the final say in these things, but John, um, we'll move on anyway to this topic now. Uh, I fired us across that you can get. <laughs> Had something to say right away about this, but we had a little shit. bit of chat about Whoa. it, and I think it's more the sort of. Um, um, I'll just I'll just stay like this, Stephen. The, te- the technical sort of terms of being a Jedi Master. Now, uh, Star Wars reveals what makes a Jedi Master. Anakin and Luke don't qualify. Um, I had a little <laughs> laugh at the, the the last bit of this uh, topic, which I will read, John. Um, this is coming in again from Screen Rant. According to the Star Wars book, I can't wait to read this because it's going to really annoy me because uh, everything I'm reading from it, I don't is like. Is this the same book that <clears throat> revealed that Leia was going to be the chosen one in the George yeah. Lucas sequel trilogy and that Darth Maul would be the villain. I yeah. think it's the same book. Yeah. Which may not be. It's not a bad idea, actually. Uh, but a Jedi Master is a knight who has taken and trained a Padawan to knighthood. It's reasonable to assume the Padawan calls their mentor Master in the part <laughs> as a mark of respect. Now, John, that's true because um, see. Um, See that when they refer to <laughs> Master Jedi is not the same as Jedi Master. Yes. Now, uh, and in part, as an expression of confidence, they will be guided to the point where they have completed the Jedi Trials. This revelation has signified implications for Star Wars lore because it means neither Anakin nor Luke should rightfully be considered Masters since their Padawans never became Knights. Yeah. It's not their fault, John, considering the obviously the politics that surrounded them at the time. In fact, this adds another dimension to Anakin Skywalker's <laughs> fall to the dark side um, in Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. One of the causes of conflict between Anakin and the Jedi Council was over whether or not Anakin was qualified to be considered a master, with the Council believing he had lack he lacked control of his emotions and was vulnerable to Palpatine's influence. For Anakin, though, the Council's reluctance would remind him of the fact his Padawan uh, Ahsoka left the Jedi Order, having been let down by the Council. These old wounds would have been reopened by his brief reconciliation with Ahsoka just before the Siege of Mandalore, mm-hmm. as told in Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7. The members of the Jedi Council were correct, but they underestimated the emotional cocktail brewing with Anakin's heart. Now, I'll just finish this up by, by saying, meanwhile, it is unknown whether Luke Skywalker ever considered himself to be a Jedi Master, but he certainly allowed others to call him that. According to Charles Soule's The Rise of Kylo Ren, Ben Solo was Luke's first apprentice, and none of his latter students had become a knight before Palpatine destroyed Luke's Jedi Temple. Thus, according to the Jedi Code, Luke Skywalker cannot 
be considered a master either. Oddly enough, this is a bit that made me laugh, his sister Leia has more of a claim to have been a Jedi Master than either Luke or Anakin because she trained Rey for a year before Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. She did And Rey did... Rey was already a Master. And <laughs> did indeed go on to become a Jedi Knight. How did she? When... She's only fallen the, the, the books, you know... Um, but she, yeah, John. The, the, the thing that bugs was, me about this was uh, Leia ever a master? Well, we don't know that. That's yeah. the thing. I just feel. I just feel that Strange. you know, over the last couple of years, um, and this is not not <laughs> anything to do with Carrie Fisher. Um, that they're trying to shoehorn as much into Leia's arc, being this almighty powerful Jedi, with no concrete evidence. There now, you could say they write the stories, yeah, so the evidence the... will be whatever they write. Yeah, fair enough. But at this point, there's no proof of that. There's, you know, apart from a few quotes in the books and some scenes we've seen in the last the last film, uh, which they shoehorned the character into, I don't think there's enough justification there to even come away with things like that. Now, I get that she probably did train, as according to canon anyway, she did train Ray for that year. Fair enough. But Luke trained Ben for probably a lot longer than that, yeah. although his fall uh, was there, but he did obviously, um, he did um, uh, what's the word um, he came back you know, he yeah. came back to the light at the very end, very yeah. much like Anakin did um, but what's, what's your views on this because um, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm looking like Darth Maul, um, I don't know what's going on, um, <laughs> it's this lighting um, Stephen, you look like Hugo Weavens uh, <laughs> Red Skull, Red yeah. Skull from yeah. Boromir yeah, I'm yeah. okay in that screen, but in that screen... Uh, that screen has HDR. Yeah. Uh, full Adobe Spectrum colour. Yeah. That one doesn't. I just have to make the point, I'm not an alcoholic. Sadly for you, Stephen... I am most, not an alcoholic. Yeah, most okay. devices are like that screen over there. They yeah. don't have full Adobe colour yeah. spectrum. So. so please do not be frightened by my appearance. <laughs> I don't look like this in real life. And I look like Yul Brenner, so I'm quite happy. Because <laughs> I was fighting all year long to look like Yul Brenner. Yul Brenner from Ten you Commandments. managed to get it in December, John. I think I managed to get it through a filter. So that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I was so close until the Scottish summer ended. Yeah. A little bit early. But what a digress, what do I make about this? I think it's a joke, to be frank. It feels to me like, Stephen, they are just rewriting the rules as they go along to make the male characters look terrible. So, yeah. the two prominent male characters in the entire Skywalker are saga rubbish. are rubbish. Yeah. They're not even Jedi Masters. John, what was the, what was the quote you sent you sent to me? Or not, the reply, sorry, you sent to me after I sent you over that headline? I'll, I'll bring it up and I'll yeah, read it to it you, was very funny. Word for word. This yeah. is what I says to you. I says... Um, that was a silence and a half. <laughs> I see. What did I say? I says, uh, Luke teleports across a galaxy but isn't a master. He teleports across, <laughs> a, he teleports his consciousness yeah. across a galaxy and holds up an entire tyrannical yeah. organisation but he's not funny. a master. Um, he I doesn't said, need to be a master. I actually put it in, obviously, in chronicle, oh, chronological order. Uh, when I sent that to you, I went, I wonder if John will pack that one out. Dean, I think you're maybe talking about the other quote as well when I says. <laughs> Essentially, he rebuilt the entire order after the original trilogy, so he decides what the F a master entailed. To quote Ringo Starr, he is the F in Jedi. Yeah. And that's from Ringo yeah. saying, I am the F in Click. I did say, John, though. Um, he is the Jedi. Know, He's I, not a master. I, I said, you know, Luke lived in the. Uh, if he had lived in the Republic era, he would be a qualified Jedi master. But since that didn't exist. Yeah, he has the rank due to skill yeah. and knowledge without a certificate. Uh, certainly was a force master. There's no doubt about that. Jedi master, you can debate, I suppose, if they're making up things in books now. Um, but he's definitely a force master. Probably one of the best. Steve, it's not his fault when he took over. He was training a new batch of people yeah. and his nephew tried to kill him. So, you know what I mean? <clears throat> it's not really yeah. his fault. Um, come on, it's bullshit. Kathleen Kennedy, she's, ma she's just making the rules up as she goes along. It's not helping our image as this sort of agenda-driven president of Lucasfilm who's doing everything to make the males look bad and is staunchly pro. And there's that word staunch, we just love that in this country. That is real affinity with a certain certain group of people. Staunch, it's not a good word. Staunchly pro-female. So John, I would have to say Ray Skywalker is standing, Skywalker. standing on the shoulder of giants. Those giants being Anakin and Luke. So we'll move on anyway. Kylo John. Ren is strong with the force. You must come with me to help me defeat the First Order. John. 
I feel it. <laughs> I need to move on after that. I'm depressed. Every time we get into a Star Wars chat, I always oh. feel depressed after it. Um, it's fan know, fiction. Listen, before we move move on, you was something you actually brought up. We've not got it in our, um, our topics. Oh, yeah. It's the Obi Wan series. Scott. Yeah, you, you want to fill us <laughs> in on that? Yeah, well, it was John Campier, Stephen. I didn't watch the show. I just seen the headline. I've not got enough time. Basically, Naomi Scott is supposedly rumoured to be coming in as a co lead in the Obi Wan TV show. So it's an Obi Wan TV show focusing on Jedi Master Obi Wan Kenobi and his hermit years on Tatooine. Mm. We don't need a co lead, but apparently, Naomi Scott is rumoured to be getting thrust in as a co lead anyway. That's just so Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> Let's force a female character in into a male-driven character story. Why not? It's like, look, The Mandalorian, Gina Carano, brilliant. Love her. Great mm. character. Getting shit on Twitter just now because of her views on mask wearing. Yeah. I don't agree with that, but it's no. not sackable. Some people are wanting no. her sacked. She's it's a strong opinion. female character. Yeah. She's not a co-lead. Not every... I mean, we're getting an all-female TV Don't show. It, it, does seem, it does seem that that's a path a lot of um, studios are going where when it is a sort of almost male-led show, mm -hmm. they have to have a co-female lead, whereas mm -hmm. if it's a female-led show, it's not the case. Stephen, I don't yeah. mind it in any other TV show, but I'm really wanting this to delve into the psychological elements of yeah. Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan character. Want him in, I don't yeah. need a cast. Him I just alone. want this guy yeah. going down the rabbit hole. It's like the Jamie Costa short TV, or a movie he made, fan yeah. movie. That's what I want to see in a TV show. Yeah, you want to see the trauma. The trauma yeah. of his best friend betraying him. Him having to... He thought he killed him yeah. at this point and losing all of his friends, the Jedi Order. He's in, hell, he's, he's in isolation on a planet he doesn't know looking after this little kid. That's traumatic. I want to see yeah. the effects on this guy. And yeah. we don't need co-leads. No. We, we don't... But I like we, Naomi Scott. I think yeah, she's great. Yeah. She can sing, yeah. she can dance, she yeah. can act. Yeah, but give her her own show. Yeah, And Star exactly. Wars. And I watch yeah. that as well. Um, but anyway, John, we'll move on to uh, get off our soapboxes. We might be getting back on them after this mm. uh, chat here about Polly Shore. Uh, remember him uh, from the 1990s? Well, I remember the uh, film. Polly Shore wants to make Encino Man 2 with Brendan Fraser and Sean Astin. Um, Encino Man was actually called California Man over here. Mm -hmm. um, just, I think, because a lot of people in Britain wouldn't know what Encino was. Uh, I what did. fuck over here? Yeah, but um, I remember watching this, John. I was uh, I was a big fan of Sean Astin, uh, you know, from the Goonies. Yeah. Uh, this was prior, obviously, to his Lord of the Rings stint. And uh, Polly Shore, um, at the time... Was on a high. <laughs> I've not heard of the guy since. I've got to be honest. I was about to say that. Um, He's Brendan one of those Fraser, guys, isn't he? Um, was he in Airheads? Was he in Airheads? I can't remember. But um, I think this might have been my first film I saw Brendan Fraser in as well. I liked it, John. This was round about the time, and it does say in this article, um, you know, but from the success of Wayne's World, because that's what this kind of film's about. It's, it's almost semi stoner type film, and it's yeah. tried to um, recapture that. And, and draw the attention to that demographic who liked Wayne's World. It was in the um, Played Chaz. I knew it. That was a good film. I liked yeah. that. But uh, Paul Shore took to Instagram and on his page, along with an old photo of himself with Aston Fraser, Shore posed a question to his followers. How many people want to see Encino Man 2? I bet you do, Polly. His caption read, in part, Shore would go on to ask his followers to contact Disney Plus through social media in an effort to make the sequel happen. Mm. You can check out Shore's post. But I have to recast. I, I, well, I, I don't know why. Brendan, why. Brendan's not aged well. <laughs> okay, no, fair he's enough. not aged well. But, um, he's not got that hair anymore no. for a start. Look at Sean as well. He's looking very yeah. thin. He's looking great, isn't he? He yeah. was never particularly thin, but he looks thinner than he no, does now. I, I like him. I've, yeah, I've he's a great guy. Him. Yeah, he's 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 very funny. And the, sure he looks great. The last there. season of the Big Bang Theory, he plays a great character in that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, is this something you'd like to see? Because um, I did like the first mm -hmm. one, and I did see it a few times. I was a bit obsessed with it round about nineteen ninety two. I was only sixteen at the time, so. Um, I don't know if I would go back and watch it and have the same kind of experience. I think it's a, a, a film of its age. Yeah. I think it. I was part of that demographic because yeah. I loved Wayne's World, I loved Bill and Ted and all that. Um, and this kind of fell into that. Not as great as those two, but um, it was still a film you know, I remembered and I still have a lot of fun memories about it. Stephen, I remember watching it too. I probably watched it many years after it released. I can't actually recall when it came out. I presume 92, yeah. 92 years and years after then, late 90s. And I did enjoy it too. This has been Brendan Fraser was 
It wasn't his height, his game. I think the mummy was probably the height of Brendan's I game, agree, but he was yeah. pretty decent in this. He was pretty damn good. He was the main man, wasn't he? A caveman brought back to life, if Link, I'm not yeah. Link mistaken. Yeah, Lincoln Yeah, yeah. And it was. It was an interesting story, kind of similar. To, I think it was weird science as well in the 80s or something. It was a similar concept, taking this person out of time. That yeah. was just a creation of these two teenage boys. Try to blend them into society. Blend, blend yeah. them into society. Yeah. A similar concept, done really well back then. You're right, it had stoner elements to it as well so great movie of its era can that transition from a 90s era into the 21st century I don't think many things are transitioning well from the 90s although a lot of people are kicking about with 90s fashion yeah. now I don't know why because it was shit it was terrible <laughs> <laughs> god awful baggy as hell I grew up in the 90s believe me I know <laughs> I know how bad it was apart from the trainers or people like to call them sneakers in other countries yeah. pretty damn good Reebok pumps yeah yeah, yeah. and stuff like that the, the old Nikes they like to call them we just call them Nike <laughs> Nike Air Max and stuff and Adidas so there was lots of good trainers back then fashion was terrible they want to transplant that element of the decade but I just don't see how the movies transplant well over to the 21st century it's like back to the future Stephen movie if it's era ain't going to transition well into a different decade different Millennium, no. in a sense, I don't think it works, and they'd have to recast because yeah. Brendan's too old now and he's bald. I don't think there's a story there either. There isn't. The, the element was obviously him coming out of the ice and then try to fit. Maybe in. it's a different guy. Um, thirty years on, um, I would hope he, he's eventually fit into society, but yeah. who knows? Maybe it's a different guy. Maybe it's a different caveman comes back. I don't know, Stephen. But look, I don't know. We'll see. Well, it's Time been an will tell. Night, hasn't it? It's been a very eventful night. The lights have went out, and now we're looking like Yul Brenner and uh, the Red, Red Skull. Skull. Yeah, <laughs> I saw myself actually on uh, your YouTube, on YouTube here, yeah. John, on look, my look Mac. Look, I look, yeah, you look like one of the the Beatles from the photo, uh, oh. the album cover with the Beatles. <laughs> with the Beatles. Yeah, you can have a face. Present. Yeah, you can <laughs> have yeah, a face. I'll just look like this. I'll just speak yeah. like this into the, the microphone. Yeah, I'll look right into the light. Yeah, Harvey. Look into the light. Two face. <laughs> yes, yes, it's a little <laughs> crescent. But yeah, Stephen, we'll, we'll round it up in that note. What is your thoughts, man, on the topics we touched upon? What's your thoughts on this controversy surrounding this BBC, once BBC, now Netflix movie, A Suitable Boy? It's creating quite the uh, religious tension over in India, if you like, between the Hindu religion and Muslim. The kissed, it's rubbing them up the wrong way. I don't really care because I'm for inclusiveness. Some people aren't, and I understand that as well, though. Yeah. What's your thoughts? No, what's your thoughts on the Eternals and this first death superhero, McCarry? Do you give a shit about this? You, Luigi. Do you think that this is good representation or just superfluous, superficial, whatever you want to call it, representation? What's your thoughts on Gremlins 3? Do you want to see a Gremlins 3? Are you excited about an on CGI gizmo? I never really got to speak about that. I'm all for that. <laughs> it's, it's like the uh, Tom and Jerry movie we watched the other day, the reaction the classic animation, you stick to the roots of the animation and non-animation and the Furby-like gizmo case. That's a 1990s term, Furbies. <laughs> Give him my age away here. What's your thoughts on Star Wars? What's your mate about this Jedi Master shit? Rewriting what it means to be a Jedi Master. Are you listening to it? I'm not. It's fan fiction. I moved on. It's We've got to the stage now, Stephen, really. I'm going to get on my soapbox one last time <laughs> where it's, it's going deeper into the rabbit hole than the expanded universe. We'll be on the stage now of where I'm finding the Lando Calrissian giving Luke hot chocolate at, on the top of buildings at night to help him get to sleep. That's more believable than the shit that Disney are pumping out now. So I'm not going to. What's your thoughts on it though? Would you want to see an Encino man, Encino man, whatever you call it too? California man. California man, we know what as. You can comment below if you've got anything to say about any of the topics. You can also like the video if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you want to see us gibbering away like this again and hopefully the lights will last. A little bit longer next time. And if you do, that's what you'll get, man. But look, as ever, until then, bye-bye.